Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? Hope that wherever you are in LinkedIn land uh, or Facebook land or YouTube land, you're doing well. Or if you're uh, watching this on uh, the recording, welcome to you as well. Uh, this is the series uh, Networking Supercharge or Networking Nugget. I, I, I don't even know what to call it, but uh, to, to celebrate the arrival of the second edition of Networking in the 21st Century and the third edition of Networking in the 21st Century on LinkedIn, on September 30th, I've been interviewing some of my favorite networking partners about what they've been doing to power their network. And uh, I've got one of my favorite networking partners on the call right now with me. Say hi, Heather. Hello. <laughs> Heather is a, a branding uh, strategist, branding experts, uh, helps people really get clear about their messages, helps people really show up uh, in a professional setting with the message that will help them find the clients and uh, customers that they need. So uh, she's also helped me a lot in my business. And in fact, in helping get those books I just mentioned off the ground. So thank you to that, Heather, uh, for that. And uh, let's not waste time. We only got 10 minutes. So let's dive in. Here's the question. And I want to make sure I get it right. So I'm going to just you know read it right from the page. What one activity has had the biggest impact on the quality of your network? Go. Okay, the quality of my network has been impacted by having clear communication. It's exactly what you said when you were introducing me, having a clear call to action, knowing exactly what you're asking for during the network. And then, of course, having a clear uh, list of what you can do to help. And mm -hmm. I would say try to limit that to one or two things, like how can you help others and be very clear about how you communicate that. Right. Love that. And let's dive into that for a moment, because I think it's very easy for people to hear clarity or clear and go, oh, I'm totally clear. And one of the things that I've been reminded about over and over again over the last 10, 20 years is that we're actually rarely clear mm -hmm. to our audience, to our hearers, the people we're networking with. So how do you well, I guess, how would you define clarity and, and what are some ways that you can actually make sure that you are being clear? Well, to start with understanding who you're talking to and mm. what their perspective is, what their needs are, it's basic target marketing 101. Understand what your audience needs and what mm -hmm. their pain points are. Then look at look at yourself through their eyes. Understand like what you're able to offer them. I, I love that idea of, of being kind of audience focused. I, I go back to something I learned of all places in a, a audio course, like the, the, the great classes or something. It was like a, a college lecture series on rhetoric. And uh, Professor Michael Drought, want to give credit where credit's due. He said, good rhetoric is not about what you want to say. It's about what they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so from what you just said, it's really about going, okay, what is, who is my audience and what are they going to need to hear from me? Right. Definitely. And the most important part of that is listening to them. And there's mm -hmm. so many ways to do that. One-on-one -on -one conversations are great. Find someone who is an ideal audience member. That's a colleague, a friend that you can talk to and ask mm -hmm. them, like, what is someone in your position needing? What are you looking for? What, what are your pain points? And then also listening online. Social media is a wonderful tool. If you can be listening to the people and the organizations that you can serve and see what they're talking about, they'll tell you what they want to hear. I love that idea. Um, and I love the idea of just listening, not how say this? Not li listening doesn't mean sometimes physically listening, uh, but it also means paying attention to any source of information that you have. So, like online is great. I, I, uh, you know, whether it's social media, LinkedIn, or even kind of looking at the the blog articles that mm -hmm. kind of are resonating with that target audience. I, I, I would even get so far as say one of the things that can be really important is go. What are the words? that seem to be popping up a lot. You know, if something's a buzzword, yeah, sometimes they're a little cringeworthy, but you can ask, why is this coming up a lot? 
right? Like, what is it about the people that are in my market that, why is this important to them, right? We really can't get away from keywords and SEO, even in conversations with humans. <laughs> it's, it is, there's a reason why those are so important is that they tell you the words that you should be using. They mm -hmm. tell you, if you're giving a clear call to action and you're not using the way they describe something, if, you know, if you're describing like we just had a lovely holiday weekend, um, you're describing a grill as a flame inducing cooker. Right. You really <laughs> want to hear the words gas grill. Right. Which one is going to resonate with them? That, uh, exactly. I, I think it's really important, even if we don't think about this as SEO for the human mind, it really is. But people, we, we kind of have the main words that we use internally right so one of the things i've always found really valuable for me when i'm i'm networking and just maybe meeting somebody for the first time or especially if i have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them listening for the way that they conceptualize their issues right or conceptualize what they're doing because you know i might think of it as oh you need you have a, a marketing issue but if they talk about branding then I need to use the word branding, even though, you know, I want to be like, well, no, it's, it's marketing. Or if I think it's a sales issue, I, I, right. It can't be again, what I want to say. I'm like, Hey, whatever they need, whatever conceptualization they have internally in their mind, mm -hmm. I have to connect with that. Does, does that make sense? Yes. That makes perfect sense. I agree with that. So, you know, if somebody, I mean, this obviously is the, the work you do, so I'm not going to make you give away all your secrets, but <laughs> you know, what's somebody's like, Hey, I want to, I want to get better at making sure that I am clear with, let's just say what I'm bringing to the, to the party. What are some, what's it like an exercise? I know you've got a whole book on this, right? Yeah. What's it, what's an exercise they could do to, to, you know, really simply start to get that clarity. This is going to sound so simple, but write it down. <laughs> like, like seriously, write it yeah. down and then rewrite it. You know, there's a reason why we have wonderful editors to make your books look amazing and other my book, look every book look amazing. Uh, write it down and then rewrite it. Take mm -hmm. some time away. Think about it. Come back. I, I love that idea of coming back. I mean, one of the things that we could would almost say is that your network message or the way that you're speaking about what you do can and will change and evolve just oh, naturally. Definitely. But even just that idea of saying, hey, I'm going to write down what I think is, and this is where I think people get trapped. They think they have to like get the right version the first time. Yeah. And, <laughs> it, you know, it's like get a version down and then just put it away for a day or two and come back or email it or just put a reminder note in your calendar to look at it the next week and let it continue to evolve because that's when it starts to take shape. I mean, we were talking about books uh a moment ago and, you know, kind of joking and smiling about it. But it's like, if somebody saw the first version, the first rough draft of any of my books <laughs> and then looked at the finished version, they wouldn't think they're the same book. But, but that's because you, you edit it yourself, you get other people, it changes and evolves. And in fact, I think that when you write the book, I told this to somebody earlier today, like you, I write books to figure out what I'm trying to say, Right. I don't know at the beginning and I go, oh, this is what I'm saying at the end. Would you, I think it's the same with kind of your message or your messaging or how you're describing what you do. Is that right? Yes, definitely. And you have to think about it too. It's part of that listening, what their pain points are and what they're going through that you can help with or yeah. the call to action you're giving is going to change because their needs are going to change. So if you don't, you know, keep up to date with it and make sure you're refreshing uh, what you're saying, what you're asking for when you're networking, you may miss an opportunity. Yeah, I love that. I, th I think that's spot on. So what we learned today, be very clear about how you can help people uh, and specific and have a call to action. Like if you feel this way or if you're having this problem, reach out to me. It also helps your networking partners know who to refer to you, which is a big thing, right? But then also just be very aware of what is actually in the minds of your network. Yes. I love it. I think that's fantastic. Uh, hey, and of, as usual, we're already at end of time. This has uh, been a blast. Um, everybody, if you want to find out more about what Heather does, uh, how she can help and how she can help you, 
uh, check her out online right here on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find a ton of information. She is a superstar that you should want to get to know. And of course, I got to tell everybody, uh, the books are going on sale September 30th, the end of this month. Super excited. Um, and we're going to continue to come live uh, a couple times a week. I think we've got another one, I think on Thursday. I'm not sure. Just be here and uh, or just catch them all up on uh, YouTube in the recordings because I know it's tough to, to find a few minutes in the middle of your day. Uh, Heather, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate you taking that time out of your day to share. And everybody, that's it. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.